I am at the River Festival and I am talking with Donnie Shelton. He doesn't think he's related to Blake Shelton, but we're not sure. Not sure. Hey, we're at his booth and we want to know a little bit about this beautiful wood and metal artwork. The uh, bases start um, square. I forge the legs around, do all the ironwork on the base, and then I'll find a cool piece of wood for the uh, tabletops or carve the seats out for the benches. Where do you get your wood? Any place I can find a cool looking piece of wood. Really? A lot of it comes from uh, a gentleman in Virginia. He has his own sawmill and we formed a relationship so he keeps the neat stuff for me and, and uh, I try and put it to good use. Hey Jeff and Charles here. We're with Pamela Covington from Prairie Village. We've got some abstract art here. Uh, we just were coming by looking at it and we're looking at this stuff and Charles was, Charles you were saying. Like I'm, I'm totally amazed. It's like what is it? Right. What am I supposed to be looking for in it? And, and and that's when I say it's you think that a lot of people want to land on something like a boat or a chair or a figure, a person, a face. Um, and a lot of times we just think that's what we need to land on to feel comfortable with the art. But actually it could be the mood or the feeling that you're getting when you see a boat. When you see a boat you think maybe a vacation or cool water or I'm off work. When really you're attaching yourself to the feeling of the work. So if you can think of the abstract work in that way and let yourself just look at it for the cool colors, then it might, it's easier to grab a hold of it and realize that you don't necessarily have to see a figure or a narrative um, or something uh, concrete like an object uh, that we relate to. Because yeah, I was looking at this one picture here, it was kind of blue, and I and I kind of felt myself a little bit cooler. You can see the sweat coming down my head, but I, I was feeling a little bit cooler right there, right? Yeah. And then Charles, you had a favorite one there. Yeah, my, mine. I felt a little more calm with the tower, and I could see it overlooking the people, and it's just like I'm up in the tower enjoying myself, excited. Yeah, that's exactly what abstract work is supposed to do to you: is just give you a feeling or a sense of something or a mood and not necessarily say, hey, that's a bowl of fruit with a glass of wine next to it, you know? But that can feel good too. <laughs> hey, we're back with you. Look, I have found the sexiest mermaid in town. <laughs> <laughs> made by Adam Schultz. He's also here with, I'm sorry, let me get your name again, Lori Acott. They're from Colorado. And this thing right here, I thought it was jade, but it's not, it's bronze. And I heard you, Adam, say earlier that this will outlast, what is that? This will outlast our society. This, be, and when everything crumbles, this will probably be one of the last things dug up by future archeologists. So if you buy this, no, you can, you don't even have to put it in a time capsule. Just sit it in your house. Your house could blow up, get taken away by a tornado. This is still going to be here. So how long did it take to do this? It took about three months to do all in all. All the way through the foundry process, we sculpted it in clay, then cast it using the lost wax process. And what is the weight of this beautiful lady? <laughs> about 45 pounds. Pounds. Oh. That's exactly how much I weigh. <laughs> Me too. I know. So where did you get the idea or the thought of that lady? And Charles likes it. You know, you got to do what you love. All right. So yeah. you sculpt what's in your heart. And I love these ladies. So <laughs> this is what it's all about here. Hey, that's good. These two are sharing a booth, which is very interesting to me because they're def different artists, but they live in the same household. So my thought when I walked up to this booth was, I can see the uh, thought process that they share. Their art is similar, but different. So let's go over and see what Lori has to offer. So this is conversation with myself. Yes. Okay, tell us how this uh, piece was inspired. 
So I made the large figure and then I put it on my shelf for six months to figure out what it was looking at. <laughs> and then I made the small figure and then I realized, oh, so it's like, you know, how we all have conversations with ourselves and part of us, there's part of us maybe that's afraid or confused or concerned about things. And then there's another part of us that's like, it's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. And that's what this piece is about. That is awesome. So tell us what this is made of. Bronze. So is this piece the piece that's yelling at that piece? Why did you make that mistake? Because that's what I see with I see this. So that tells me a lot about you. <laughs> Bam! So Bam! For me, this piece, this piece, the hands are behind the back and it's loving and supporting. So some people who tend to be hard on their, themselves tend to see this as being hard on themselves. He's too hard on himself. That's right. More loving and supportive of yourself. Yeah. That's the beauty of art, people. It's that everybody gets a different perspective when they look at a piece. And it's all about how it makes you feel and not about necessarily what the artist was feeling when they created it. That's why you buy it and take it home. Exactly. Do you agree? Exactly right. I, absolutely. I, I believe that the, the artwork is not finished until somebody views it and brings their own experiences in life to a sculpture. Awesome. All right. Lori and Adam at Yay. the festival. Yay. Woo!